This is the tiny township of Maydina, and until recently, not a lot really goes on at Maydina. You sort of drive through Maydina and keep going, but now, thanks to a new tourism hub, Maydina is going to be put on the map. It is such an exciting place. You know, in Medina, it's only a few um, k's down to the World Heritage Area, and on the other direction, it's only about 10 k's to the Mountainfield National Park, which gets about 100,000 visitors. The area is just sensational. It doesn't matter what sort of uh, weather you have, if it's uh, sunny and nice and it's warm, but if it's, uh, if it's damp, well, as you can see today, it's just magnificent. It has uh, a real feel to it. Uh, I think it's one of the, uh, one of the iconic attractions. Medina is about an hour and a half west of Hobart. It's the gateway to the Sticks and Florentine and ever since it was settled, forestry has been front and centre. This new Eagles Eerie lookout from on top of Abbott's Peak, giving visitors a look over the forests and back into history. This is the exciting thing about Medina. This is something that you don't see too, too much in Tasmania, is that you can actually experience in Medina a very rich timber heritage. Uh, you know, Medina used to supply the Boyer Mill with timber. The Boyer Mill produced newsprint for Australia's leading newspapers. This is the place where people read over their breakfast tables the momentous events in Australia for the last 50 or 60 years. So, you know, people do want to hear the stories of the timber industry, but they also want to experience wilderness and they want to experience the, the beauty of the place. It's just such a wonderful place because it brings all of those things together. There are some remarkable stories about the early timber gathering um, heritage of Maydana, stories that need to be told but are not yet being told. So. Yes, um, you will see harvesting activities when you come to Maydana, but it's part of the story of the area. The other component to Maydana's transformation into the tourism market has been creating what's known as the Tourist Hub, a partnership between Forestry Tasmania and private operators. A lot of good things that can happen here. Uh, there's been a lot of positive input with um, operators in the area and there's so much potential. Operators such as father and son team Shannon and Kenor will provide mountain biking and fishing tours. This area fits in really well. It's you know we can offer a niche product here that uh, that suits the the young and active as well as the uh, the not so active fishermen. Um, but yeah, it's a great place, and uh, I just think that Medina you know really needs a bit of a, a push. Um, it's a place that certainly died. Um, as far as a tourist destination and um, you know what forestry is doing is is a great thing so yeah we're, we're supporting it and we'll be here operating. Four wheel drive tours, ab sailing adventures or just a day exploring the forest, Maydina now caters for everybody. Day involves we pick up, we pick up and deliver back to hotels and we'll involve us doing the Eagles Erie run to the top and the four wheel drive and from there we'll go out into uh, the sticks and basically get out amongst the forests. The future for this tiny town is bright with ideas for stage two and beyond coming thick and fast. Forestry keen to continue on its adventure side of tourism by making Maydina the adventure capital of Tasmania. There's been a lot of debate in Forestry Tasmania about what we should call this, whether it's the Maydina Adventure Hub or some other fancier name. At the end of the day, wouldn't it be lovely if Maydina became synonymous with adventure tourism, just in the same way that Queenstown and New Zealand has. Um, that is the vision. Now, obviously it's not going to be achieved overnight, but as we work through this process over two, three, five, ten years, yes, Maydina will be on the map, and it won't be on the map in Tasmania. It'll be internationally recognised, I think, as an adventure hub. Stage one of Maydina is up and running all year round. Eagles Airy on the very top of Abbott's Peak is easy to get to and provides spectacular views over the Styx Forest. The Adventure Tourism Hub offers a variety of activities run by private operators. The best thing you can do is jump on the Forestry Tasmania website for more details or jump in your car and go and check out this beautiful part of Tasmania. The Eagles Eerie will provide a rooftop of Tasmania experience, stunning views over working forests and wilderness areas. The Adventure Hub is expected to lift the total number of visitors to FT's commercial tourism sites to over 200 Thousand. And Forestry Tasmania will partner with small operators to provide a range of soft adventure activities, so get out there and explore it yourself.
Yeah, great advice. Next week on the program, it's all about Tassie's forests and the products that come out of them. Everything from wood chips to fine furniture. We venture to the front line of the forest debate and take a bird's eye view of the trees flying high above nature at Hollybank. That's next time on Going Bush.